Every Saturday, I meet my best friend Nick for lunch at the treehouse. But today, I got here before him. Hey, Emily! I'm here! Where were you? What I found. What is it? I don't know. It's just a bunch of rocks. That shiny one there is kind of pretty. Yeah, it sure is. I'll just shine it up. Why, I'm the rock wizard, of course. <laughs> and who found my wondrous rock kit? I did. I'm Nick. Uh-huh. And I'm Emily. Oh. What are you doing here? Why, I've been called here according to the irrevocable directions of the wondrous rock kit. You called me here when you rubbed the glowing stone. Irrevocable directions? It means directions that cannot be changed. But it's just a rocket. It's not just any rocket. It's the wondrous rocket. Uh, uh. Upon rubbing the glowing rock, the owner of the wondrous rocket will begin a journey to the very center of the earth. Learning about rocks and minerals. The journey will only end when the rocket owner understands what rocks and minerals are and what causes them to change. What have you done to our treehouse? Think of it this way. This room, this treehouse, will act as a vehicle, taking us anywhere we need to be to help us learn more about rocks and minerals. Right now, we're many miles beneath the surface of the Earth. This is where a lot of the rocks that we see on the Earth are formed. Why do you have a light on your forehead? <laughs> Funny you should ask. You see, I'm a geologist. I was heading into the mine where it's very dark to collect some samples. What's a geologist? Well, let's find out. You see, a geologist is a scientist who studies the Earth and the materials that make up the Earth's crust. This includes studying rocks, the solid Earth materials, and learning more about what they are made of. Are rocks only found underground? Oh my goodness, no! Rocks can be found everywhere. When you go to the mountains, huge rocks can be seen sticking out of the earth. In valleys and deserts, huge rocks, rocks bigger than a car, can be found. These are called boulders. There are even rocks at the bottom of the ocean. Another place we see rocks is in the materials used to build things. By breaking rocks into smaller pieces, we can use them to make walls and buildings, to pave roads, and make walkways. We can even use rocks to make statues and pottery. Sounds like just about everything can be rock. Well, not quite. Rocks are the non-living solid material that make up our Earth. This means that no matter how much something may look like a rock, if it's alive, it can't be a rock. If it's a liquid or not solid, it can't be a rock. And even though it's as hard as a rock, like this plastic toy, or it looks like a rock, like this rubber ball, if it was made by a person, it can't be a rock. So, remember, if it's not alive, if it's solid, and it's not made by a person, it's probably a rock. Some of these rocks, like this one, seem to be made up of lots of different stuff. Ah, you're a fast learner, Nicholas. The stuff that rocks are made of is called minerals. Minerals are the ingredients that make up a rock. For example, the rock you're holding is called granite. It's made up of several different minerals. 
If we carefully break this rock apart, it's easier to see the different minerals. But what happens if I break apart the minerals? Well, you'll just get smaller pieces of the same mineral. Emily, where's your lunch and what's in it? Well, a sandwich, some chips, uh -huh. an apple, and two cookies. Very good. Hand me a cookie, please. Oh, okay. It had to be my favorite cookie. Let's pretend that the cookie is a rock. Now, if the cookie is a rock, the nuts and the raisins are two different minerals in the rock. Now, if we break the cookie apart, we can easily see each ingredient. The raisins, the nuts, and the cookie dough. But if we break a raisin apart... We just get smaller pieces of raisins. That's right. You got it. So, minerals are the materials that make up a rock, kind of like the ingredients used to make cookies. Exactly! You've both got it! <laughs> Congratulations! But never eat a rock. Oh, oh yuck! <laughs> now, let's get to work. Get to work? I thought we were done. Oh, no! Our journey's only just begun. For example, have you noticed that all of the rocks in your rock kit are different? Have you noticed how some are very shiny while others are very rough? Some have lots of color and others don't. These differences are called properties. Geologists can identify different rocks by studying these properties. You can determine a rock's properties by observing it. How do you observe a rock? By looking at it very carefully. Here, this might help. What color is it? Is it shiny or dull? Notice how the rock feels. Is it smooth or rough? Does it break apart easily or is it very hard? Geologists usually test rocks to grade their properties. Here, Emily, you take this piece of gypsum. And Nick, here's a piece of quartz for you. Emily, what happens when you scratch it with your fingernail? It crumbles. Little pieces of the rock fall off. That's because gypsum is not very hard. Now, Nick, you try it. Wow, doesn't even leave a mark. Is that because quartz is very hard? Exactly. In fact, quartz is so hard that you cannot scratch it, even with a nail. Now, watch what happens when we rub the two rocks together. See how tiny pieces of gypsum are left on the quartz? This shows that the quartz is harder than the gypsum. Hardness is one of the properties geologists use to identify rocks and minerals. The properties of rocks and minerals tell us what type of mineral we're looking at and how they were formed. In fact, if you observe minerals closely enough, they'll tell you their own story. But first, let's clean up. <laughs> wow. Can you clean my room? Ah, uh, sorry. Now, let me introduce you to a few of my most interesting friends. <laughs> You guys ready to meet some new kids? <laughs> oh, absolutely. My name is and I'm so And you use me if you run a lot. My name is Claus, I'm a crystal, you see. I'm so pretty and clear, you can see through me. Mike is my name, the mistress you see I can break and flake in two thin sheets Wow! <laughs> I thought you said rocks weren't alive Well, they aren't But when you observe them, they can be interesting 
I'll say. Actually, though, most rocks and minerals are found underground. If we could cut into the Earth, we would see that the Earth is made up of three layers. The outer layer is called the crust and covers the entire planet. It is made of solid rock and can be many miles thick. Everywhere you go, rocks are under you. Whether you're walking on grass or riding in a car, rocks are under you. What about when I'm in a boat? Even when you are on the water in a boat, rocks are even below the ocean. Every rock you see was once part of the Earth's crust. In fact, those huge rocks we talked about earlier that were sticking out of the ground, those outcroppings are still part of the Earth's crust. The layer just below the crust is called the mantle. The mantle is very hot. In fact, the mantle is so hot that almost anything you think of would melt in an instant. At the top, where the mantle meets the crust, it is mostly solid rock. But further down, even the rock starts to melt. This center part of the Earth is called the core. While no one has actually ever been to the center of the Earth, scientists know that the core has two parts, a liquid outside part and a solid inside part. They also know that the core is much hotter than the mantle. The deepest hole ever dug is about 19 miles deep. Sometimes erupting volcanoes bring melted rocks up from 25 to 30 miles below the surface. To get to the center of the earth, you would have to dig a hole almost 4,000 miles straight down from where you are sitting right now. <laughs> and that could take a while. It's all that squeezing and melting of rocks, though, that makes rocks so different from each other. We already know that in some places inside the earth, it's so hot that rocks actually melt, right? These melted rocks, called magma, are pushed up through cracks and crevices. Magma that makes it all the way to the Earth's surface erupts out of volcanoes. Hot ash blows into the air. When it settles to the ground, it hardens into tough. See the layers and air pockets? Magma that flows out of volcanoes is called lava. When lava cools, it becomes basalt or scoria. This rock is full of air pockets. These were formed when the foam on the top of flowing lava hardened. So all three of those rocks came from melted rocks? That's right, Emily. Any rock formed from melted rock or magma is called igneous. Igneous means made from fire. Let's see how another type of rock was made. Now, sometimes little tiny pieces of rocks, such as sand and mud, get carried by wind and water. These tiny pieces of rock, known as sediment, are swept by creeks and rivers into lakes and oceans. The sediment settles to the bottom. Then more sediment settles on top of it, so it makes layers. After thousands of years, these layers are pressed together by the weight of more layers of sediment and harden into another type of rock, called sedimentary rock. See the layers? Finally, a third type of rock may be formed when either a sedimentary rock or an igneous rock is forced back down deep underground. There, it may be squeezed very hard by other rocks and heated to super high temperatures. When that happens, a new kind of rock called metamorphic rock is formed. Metamorphic means changed. An igneous rock like this granite can be changed into a beautiful metamorphic rock like this gneiss. Or a rough, soft, sedimentary rock like limestone can become a hard, smooth, metamorphic rock called marble. Once again, the rocks themselves tell the story the best.
Now that's real rock music. <laughs> is it raining? Sounds to me like it is. You see, even something as simple as rain can change a rock. In fact, weather can break down a rock in many ways. A swiftly flowing stream or river can wear down almost any rock after many years. In the mountains, water may seep into a crack in a rock and then freeze. Every time this happens, the frozen water or ice makes the crack a little bigger. Finally, the rock breaks into pieces and is carried away with the water. This is called erosion. If you look carefully at this picture of the Grand Canyon, you can see a river way down at the bottom. Geologists tell us that millions of years ago, the Grand Canyon was nothing more than a creek or small riverbed. Over the years, water carved away layer after layer of small pieces of rock until it became the big canyon it is today. Erosion also occurs when the oceans pound against the shoreline. Even slow-moving glaciers can change the earth. They move huge amounts of rock. Nick, take a look under the bag. How'd that get there? <laughs> What about a rock that size, Mr. Wizard? Well, a rock that size is called a pebble. It was part of a much larger rock, as big or even bigger than a mountain. It might have been broken off by the weather. The weather can break rocks into all different sizes. The largest rocks are called boulders. These are usually bigger than a car and too big to be moved by one person. But they can be moved by a flood or a glacier. These rocks are smaller than pebbles. This size rock is called gravel. You see them on a gravel road. Gravel is small enough that it can be carried by a swiftly moving stream. A rock that is smaller still is sand, like at the beach. It feels gritty, and if you look real close, it actually looks like tiny rock pieces. Silt is even smaller than sand. It can be seen as the cloudy substance that appears when the water is disturbed. Clay is even smaller than silt. I thought clay was used to make pottery. It is, Emily. But before it's prepared by the potter, it comes out of the earth as particles so small they may feel slimy or greasy, almost like a gooey liquid. So, what do we know so far? Well, we know that minerals are the ingredients that make up a rock, a lot like raisins are a part of a cookie. And we can observe the special properties that make them different from other minerals. Exactly right. And how are rocks formed? Igneous means made from fire. So we know that igneous rocks were made from magma or melted rock. Sedimentary rock is made from layers of tiny rock pieces. Sometimes these rocks return deep into the earth and are heated and squeezed so hard that they form a different type of rock called metamorphic rock. I'm very impressed. But what causes rocks to become different sizes? That's easy. The weather mostly. Wind and rain, streams from melted snow, glaciers, and even ice in small cracks can break big rocks into smaller rocks. And rocks can vary in size from boulders bigger than cars to clay whose particles are so small it actually feels kind of slimy. No doubt about it. You have earned the title of Junior Geologist. All right. Do we get a prize? Better than that. <laughs> All right. Do the lights work? They work magic. Wow. This Ready? Is great. Now. Where'd it go? Wow. We're back in the tree. Was that real? It must have been, because we still have the hats. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs>